Hi everybody, I'm Alexandre Goua and I will present you some joint work with Daniela Petrizan about the combination of two kinds of choices for abstract systems, namely probabilistic and non-deterministic choice. And this will be done using a tool named weak distributive laws. First, I will recall the two monads of interest. The first one is a monad uh, that aims to model non-deterministic choice, the covariant power set monad. On a set, it gives the set of all subsets. On a function, it takes direct images. Uh, the unit of this monad is the singleton operation and the multiplication is given by union. Now, the other monad I want to consider is the fi finitely supported probability distribution monad, D. Uh, on a function, it takes perfer one measures. The unit is given by direct distributions and the multiplication can be seen as flattening two levels of a tree diagram into one. Now, people tried since a long time to model um, systems using both of these monads. So combining non-deterministic choice and probabilistic choice. There is work from Mislov, Tix, Kaimel, and Plotkin about this. But it was proved in 2006 that there is no distributive law from GP over PD, meaning that there is no systematic way using the theory of distributive law of John Beck to get abstract results uh, by combining these two monads. However, recently the coalgebraic community had a look on this problem and showed that actually one can compute by hand many of the constructions that were originally made possible by the distributive law framework. So there is no distributive law, but what is really very disturbing is that almost everything happens as if there is one. For example, in the concure paper here, Bonke, Silva, and Sokolova perform generalized determinization of probabilistic automata. And this really looks like the usual generalized determinization where you use a distributive law, but strange because there is no distributive law. Here, same, same thing. Uh, in the Leaks paper of 2019, Bonkin, Sokolova, and Vignudeli uh, define presentation for combined theories of D and P. And it's almost, almost as if there is a distributive law because we are just like distributing axioms over each other, almost. So this is really strange, like that something is missing to understand why this is working so well. The aim of this talk is precisely to fix this gap. So first, I will recall back theory of distributive laws by presenting you the trinity between uh, distributive laws, extensions, and liftings. And then I will present the weak framework, the framework of weak distributive law, uh, which also has a trinity. Then I will show that there is actually a weak distributive law and a unique well-behaved weak distributive law of the given type dp over pd. Finally, I will show that we obtain by taking the weak lifting that is corresponding to this weak distributive law via the weak trinity, we obtain the convex power set monad, which is a monad that has been heavily used by people who are trying to model together non-deterministic choice and probabilistic choice. Finally, I will give some application to probabilistic automata and see that we retrieve some results of Bonki, Silva, Sokolova, and Vignudeli. <clears throat> so now we'll make some reminders about the theory of distributive laws. What is a distributive law? When you got two monads, two monads T and S, a distributive law of TS over ST is just a natural transformation of the given type, but with she is interacting well with the structure of the monad. So there is one diagram to be commutative per data of the monad. And when you have this, you actually have many more. You have the trinity. So this is right from the theory of John Beck. Um, there is actually a one-to-one -one correspondence between three things. So distributive laws, the extensions, and the liftings. And extensions, an extension is just saying that we are taking this monad T to the classy category of S and that this T over line is a monad in the classy category 
and this diagram commute, meaning that there are three such diagrams, one for the functor, one for the unit, one for the multiplication, and each one is commuting. Dually, a lifting of S to the Allain member category of T is a monad lying in the Allain member category, which is making this diagram commute, meaning that, um, again, three diagrams commute, one for the functor, one for the unit, one for the natural conformation. So these are really three sides of the same coin. And a key point about this is that when you have any of these three things, you get a monad structure on the composite functor ST. How, actually, the only hard part about this is to get a multiplication. And provided you have a distributive law, you can define a multiplication for ST by first making commute these two functor T and S. And here you get S, S, T, T, and you can apply both the multiplications of your monads S and T. So you get a monad structure. How do we do now in practice to find distributive laws? Uh, there is no general formula, but but in the case of the category sets, if you take as the monad S, the covariant power set monad presented before, first you can see that the Claisley category of P is the same as the category well of sets and relations. And inspiring from the theorem of Bohr, which was saying that you can extend a functor to well to a locally monotone extension if and only if this functor preserve weak pullbacks. And similarly, you can extend a natural transformation from set to rel if and only if its naturality squares are with pullbacks. Putting this all together, you can prove that there will be a unique locally monotone extension of a, funct uh, a monad T to the category of relations. If and only if T preserve with pullbacks and eta and mu naturality squares are weak pullbacks. Here, the locally monotone part means that uh, this extension is well behaved in the sense that it preserves the order structure on home sets of uh, the category well. <clears throat> so now, as there is a unique, s s such thing does not exist or is unique. When it's unique, we call it canonical. So we call it the canonical extension. And according to the trinity of Beck, we also obtain a unique canonical distributive law and a unique canonical lifting. We'll call all of them canonical. Okay, so let's go back to our framework of P and D. Um, unfortunately, the unit of the monad D does not always preserve weak pullbacks. So why? Consider this diagram, where A and B are two D distinct uh, things. Um, if you get in the singleton A, you take A, you don't have any, much choice about this, but in the distributions over A, B, you can take, for example, a, a joint distribution, one half over A plus one half over B. Well, as the distribution over the singleton A is a singleton, these two elements are mapped to the same thing here. So if this were a weak pullback, we would be able to find something here, which is mapped to this distribution via the unit. But this is impossible because the unit is mapping everything to Dirac distributions and this distribution one half plus one half is not a, a Dirac distribution. So the conditions of the term bar are not satisfied. There is no canonical distributive law dp over pd. And actually the result is stronger. There is no law at all. This was the result proved in the paper of Varaka and Wingscale um, inspired from an idea of a counterexample given by Plotkin. And in this counterexample, the thing that is making everything collapse is again the unit of the monad D. So this is really not a surprise that here the unit is not working. Uh, it's the same problem in both cases. The unit is making everything collapse. So how do we get with this? How do we escape from this? Uh, uh, dead end. Well, the idea is to use a framework, uh, a, a weaker framework called weak distributive rules. 
Um, all these are not very well known. I will recall some things about this. So weak distributive laws were introduced by Street and Bohm a few years ago. But they were recently reintroduced by Garner, who simplified a lot of the framework and uh, proved also in his paper uh, this year that one can identify the Viatoris monad in the category of compact Hausdorff spaces as a weak lifting of the power set monad. So our idea here is to uh, use Garner's framework and I will uh, present it during the next few slides. What is a weak distributive law? A weak distributive law is exactly the same thing as a distributive law except that we dropped this diagram here. We just deleted the diagram stating that uh, the unit of the monad T is well behaved because it's not. And this provided you make a little slight assumption on the category C, namely that idempotence split in C. Then there is still a trinity, which I call the weak trinity and was developed by Kerner in, in his paper. Uh, so you have a notion of weak extensions, a notion of weak liftings, and this is in one-to-one -one correspondence with, with distributive laws. Let's begin with the weak extensions. A weak extension is not a monad. It is only a functor and a natural transformation for the multiplication. And this is an extension in the sense that this diagram commutes both for the functor and for the multiplication. So the unit here is dropped compared to the previous uh, extension framework. A weak lifting is weak in some other sense, because actually a weak lifting is really a monad. So you have the functor unit of the multiplication. But here, what is happening is that this diagram is not commuting. This diagram almost commutes in the sense that there are natural transformations, pi and yota, such that if you apply yota then pi, you get the identity. But if you apply pi, then yota, it's not the identity. So we cannot simplify this by saying that the diagram commutes. And this is why this is a weak lifting. Uh, further, uh, this pi and yota have to satisfy four diagrams, but I did not include them here because it's too big, uh, whatever. So again, we have this correspondence. And again, this leads to a monad structure on a composite functor. This time, it's not exactly a monad structure on ST because UTS here, UTS hat, cannot be simplified into SU. And so this cannot be simplified into ST. Why? Because uh, the natural transformation pi and yota are not inverse to each other. So you still get a monad structure, but not on the composite monad functor. I will just present quickly how to compute a weak lifting given a weak distributive law. So this is just one implication of the previous diagram. So if you get a distributive law, a weak distributive law, you want to lift it to the island and rule category of T. So you take a T algebra XA, and then how do you lift it? You will consider this morphism, <clears throat> which is actually an idempotent, and recall that we have made the assumption that our idempotent splits in our base category. So this splits, and you get the value of your weak lifting exactly by splitting this idempotent. What happens if we are in the strong case? Actually, if gamma is a real strong distributive law, then you can simplify using the diagram we dropped, you can simplify this part of the diagram to get a composition of two functions here, two morphisms, and then you can use the fact that A is an algebra and you can get that this is the identity. So splitting does not bring much information when you are in the case of strong distributive loads. The lifting acts like the monad S. <clears throat> uh, the question is now the same as before. How can we find a suitable weak distributive law 
in the case where one of the monad is the power set monad. So we can still use the result of bar, and this time Gurner proved in his paper this year that there is a unique locally monotone weak, weak extension of the monad T to the category of relations, sets and relation, if and only if T preserve weak pullback and mu, the multiplication, have has naturality squared that are weak pullbacks. So same as before, we dropped the part about the unit, and this still works fine. So as for the previous case, this unique locally monotone weak extension will be called the canonical weak extension. And according to the weak trinity, we also obtain a canonical weak distributive law and a canonical weak lifting. <clears throat> Let's go back to our problem. We will try to use the theorem of Gurner with D, the distribution monad. So first we have to prove that D preserves weak pullbacks. And this is actually a known result since a long time, uh, proved independently by Deving and Houghton and by Moss. And we have also to prove that the naturality squares of the multiplication are weak pullbacks. And this is actually true. We proved it in our leaks paper. And the proof, the idea of the proof is to reduce the problem um, to finding a non-negative solution for some specific system of linear equations. And then when we have reduced the problem to this, we use a lemma from a linear programming forecast lemma to conclude by showing that the second case can't happen. So we are in the first case and it, give, it gives us a solution. Um, so it's slightly technical, but it has to be noted that um, this theorem was proved independently this year by Fritz and Perron in the paper of MFPS, and they do not use the forecast lemma at all. Okay, so according to our framework, there is a unique locally monotone weak extension of the monad D to the category of sets and relations. And we can compute the corresponding weak distributive law, gamma, which is um, taking a distribution of our sets and sending us a, a set of distribution that are convex combination according to the same coefficients here, but the phi i here are distributions for which the support is included into b i. And this is a unique, well-behaved, in the sense that this corresponds to a locally monotone extension, uh, weak distributive law of the given type. So now we can compute the weak lifting using the framework I presented uh, before. What happens when you present, compute the weak lifting is you take a set, it gives you the Dirac function on this set, and by applying the weak distributive law here, you get the set of all distributions whose support is included into B. Now remind that you have um, an algebra A, and you will apply pointwise your algebra to every of these phi, to get what is often identified as the convex hull of the port B with respect to the algebra A. So now we, we are looking to split this item potent. So we are looking for fixed points of these functions. Uh, and this function has precisely as fixed points uh, the convex subsets with respect to the algebra A. So from this, we can deduce that the weak lifting of the polar set monad to the alignment move category of D is the convex polar set monad PC, which is precisely the monad that was used by um, many authors in the real literature to, to model systems that were um, using both non-determinism and probabilistic choice. Okay. Uh, let's just give some applications here. So first we have an application about generalized determinization. So we have an automaton of the shape X um, to STX. So you have two kinds of branching here. And we want to determinize it in the sense that we want to get another quadrilateral, another automaton, <coughs> um, uh, whose state space is now TX. So we, we made the, space, space, the state space more structured 
and so we get a coalgebra for the functor S. Uh, how do we ensure that this uh, such a procedure is fine and canonical? Uh, by looking at lifting of the free and forgetful Eilenberg mock functors. So we built in our paper uh, a diagram like this. And this proves that uh, there is a generalized determination procedure using weak distributive laws to lift um, coalgebras to the coalgebras into the category of Eilenberg mock. So more specifically, in our case, what happens is that we can transform a PD coalgebra, this is a, a probabilistic automaton actually, into a PC coalgebra. So a coalgebra living here, meaning that it behaves well with respect to um, free algebra. And then if you forget the free algebra structures, you, you come back into the coalgebra of P, meaning that you have a actually a belief state transformer. This is a non-deterministic automaton with a distribution as a, as a state. <clears throat> uh, this construction was obtained by hand in the paper of Bonki, Silva, and Sokolova. And it's really interesting to see that actually this is not, um, this is really a canonical construction in the sense that it corresponds to the unique, well-behaved, uh, weak distributive law of the type DP over PD. Uh, we also have another application, but uh, we're not present it in detail here, but you can also get a presentation for PCD algebras. This is convex semi-lattices. And this presentation is the same as the one of Bunky, Sokolova, and Dignadeli in the leaks paper of last year. So our frameworks also uh, yield that there is um, you can obtain uh, such presentation by mixing the two, uh, two presentations of the, the monads. Uh, there are really many interesting directions uh, after that. So our ongoing work is the following. We already show that actually, um, since, since the, the publication of this leaks paper, we already shown that up to techniques are really be well behaved with respect to weak distributive laws. And the framework of up to techniques really works well. So we can compare systems, uh, for example, systems that were obtained via generalized determinization using up to techniques, even if this was obtained via weak distributive laws. And another famous example of non existence of distributive law is for the double covariant poor set monad. And we proved also using an example from Garner that one can model alternating automata using uh, the unique canonical weak distributive law of PP over PP. And we also have some beginning about uh, compositionality results. So open question include um, uh, considering the countable distribution model instead of the distribution with finite support D. Uh, and I think uh, it still works with the countable distribution monad because um, whereas our proof of the, the fact that mu um, naturality squares are weak pullbacks using um, Farkas lemma, the proof of uh, Perron or Fritz does not use Farkas lemma and so m might be easily adapted to the case of the countable distribution monad. So I think that there is actually uh, a redistributive law for this monad over P. And the last point is to go into, into continuous space, so to go quantitative. <clears throat> so either by looking, for example, in the more complex um, distribution or probability setting, for example, quasi borel spaces, or by going into compact Hausdorff category, or by beginning to quantify over the um, differences, quantitative differences between systems uh, using the category of um, complete metric spaces. So many things are still to be done here. Well, thank you for your attention.